Hi, welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. In this video, we talk about why some plants can live with their roots in nothing but water, but other plants that live in soil, as soon as we water them a little bit too much, they die. Now let's go. So in front of me here, I have two pothos. One of them is planted in soil and the other one is planted purely in water. Nothing else but water. So how come this one can be in pure water, only water, but as soon as I give this one a little bit too much water, it will die. Now the explanation is of course that they have completely different root environments. But to understand this we first need to know two things. Number one, roots need oxygen to function properly and to be able to carry out something called root respiration. Now what does that mean? Well, the plant actually creates its own food. Through photosynthesis it produces carbohydrates or sugars that's the food for the plant. But to be able to break down those sugars into energy it can use in the cells, it has to have oxygen. And that process is carried out by the roots, and the roots actually find that oxygen in the soil. In the soil you have small air pockets where there's not water or soil or other particles, you have small, small air pockets. Within those air pockets you have oxygen. So by using that oxygen through root respiration, it breaks down the sugars to create energy for the cells. Now the most important thing to remember here is that roots need oxygen to function properly. Number two, almost all types of soil has fungi and bacteria in it. Now usually that fungi and bacteria actually works together with the plant or with the roots to create a synergy. They're helping each other. So they are good, so to speak, good fungi and good bacteria. This is also called mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza? 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 Well, it's, it's spelled like this. So what happens to a plant that is in soil and you water it too much, or if it's standing in water for a long period of time? This is called waterlogged. Uh, well, number one, what happens is that the water actually pushes out all of those oxygen that are in those small spaces in the soil. So what we're actually doing is that we're pushing away the available oxygen for the roots. We're hindering the roots to function properly. In other terms, the roots are not able to do their root respiration as it should, so the plant is not getting the energy it needs. This means that the plant gets stressed. Number two, the good fungi and bacteria that we had in the soil, they cannot function in this environment where you have a lot of water. This is called an anaerobic environment. So what happens instead is that other fungi and bacteria takes over. And these are fungi and bacteria that can live in an anaerobic environment, meaning no oxygen. And these organisms produce harmful byproducts that are actually toxic to the roots. And in more detail, what happens is that the root hairs on the roots that are absorbing the water are actually harmed. Or in some cases, they actually disappear completely. So even though you have a lot of water for the roots, they're not able to absorb and use that water. Another byproduct of this is that it usually smells quite bad. So you can usually smell the root rot before you can see something on the plant. Because 
root rot attacks the roots and it, you cannot see the roots because they're in the pot. Now, if you suspect that you have gotten root rot, you might smell it. Then you can, of course, pick, take the plant out of the pot and take a look at the roots. You will spot the root rot by the roots being dark brown or black. And the smell, of course, but they are not as they should look. Now, most roots have a white or whitish color. Some roots are a little bit light brown as well. But if they are black and smells really, really bad, you probably have root rot. So then how come we can have a plant in pure water like this? We have roots that are living in pure water, no soil, no other type of substrate, just water. Why isn't this plant getting root rot? Well, number one, what happens in pure water is that the plant actually creates roots that we call adventitious roots. What that means is that those roots can actually pull oxygen straight from the water. So it will be able to do that root respiration because it takes out the oxygen from the water. So it will not get waterlogged in the same way. Number two, we have been using tap water here in Sweden for this plant here. And in tap water, you have no or almost no bacteria or fungi. You don't have the good ones and you don't have the bad ones, meaning that you will probably not get problems with the roots due to fungi and bacteria. Number three, as long as you exchange the water around the roots to make sure you have oxygen in the water, then you will be fine. And it's our recommendation that you exchange the water at least once a week, but you can do it as often as once a day to make sure that the oxygen available for the roots is always there. So what can we extract from all this information? Well, basically that oxygen for the roots is a vital part of a plant's survival. If you remove the oxygen by the roots, you will start harming your plant. It is our experience that it is better to, if you have a plant that is planted in soil like this one, it is better to let it dry up a little bit more than to give it too much water and thereby risking it getting waterlogged. And also, if you have your plants planted in pure water like this, it's extremely important that you exchange the water in a good frequency to make sure that the roots have oxygen. So here are four useful tips to be able to avoid waterlogging your plants. Number one, always use drainage holes. By using drainage holes and making sure that you get rid of the excess water coming out from the drainage holes, you will help your plant to get that perfect balance of water and oxygen for the roots. Number two, make sure that when you repot your plants, you use a soil that has good drainage. What I mean by that is that if you use standard planting soil, it's good to mix in something like Laker pebbles, perlite or pumice. These substrates will help that soil to get good drainage. Number three, we only water our plants again when the top soil one to two inches or two and a half to five centimeters down in the pot are dry. So use your finger to just feel the soil. When it's dry on top here, then you can water again with no risk or minimal risk of water logging. And number four, you can always look for signs of root rot. Some of those signs can be yellowing of the leaves, browning of the leaves, black spots or holes in the leaves, an overall wiltering or sagging of the plant, even though you know that it has access to water, and of course, 
that bad, bad smell. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now, until next time, how are you doing?